Welcome to the Intel Cordis Prime Software Design Series Timing Analyzer Online Training Part 2 Timing Analyzer GUI. My name is Steve. This training is available for desktop viewing as well as in a format compatible with portable devices both available from the same link included in your registration email. For either version, while watching the training, use the controls at the top and side of the screen to navigate to any point. Feel free to pause the training at any time to experiment with the software. When you're done with the training, please use the link provided in the registration email you were sent to provide us feedback on the training and ways in which it can be improved. I'll remind you about that later. In this course, you will learn how to perform timing analysis in the Intel Cordis Prime software using Timing Analyzer. You'll use Synopsys Design Constraints or .sdc files to constrain a design to meet timing requirements and to compare results. You will learn how to generate timing reports in Timing Analyzer and gain familiarity with its graphical user interface. Here is the agenda for this training. In the previous part, we looked at basic timing analysis concepts and terminology used in the Timing Analyzer. This included a discussion of terminology used to select nodes from the SDC netlist for targeting timing constraints. In this part, you will be introduced to the Timing Analyzer GUI and its use. In subsequent parts of this training, available on the Intel Training website and linked at the end of this training, you'll learn how to incorporate Timing Analyzer into the Cordis Prime design flow and take a look at Timing Analyzer's reporting features in more detail. Finally, you'll learn about the SDC constraints required to fully constrain a design. Now that you understand all the terminology needed to use the Timing Analyzer, let's take a look at the tool itself. Timing Analyzer, found in all editions of the Intel Cordis Prime software, provides a powerful timing analysis solution for designers with any level of timing analysis experience and for designs of all level of complexity. It's easy to use, providing a graphical interface for a beginner and those who prefer a GUI, while completely supporting a tickle scripting based environment. Timing Analyzer provides fast, on demand, and interactive data reporting to save time and to make it easy to get detailed timing analysis only on the paths of interest. As already mentioned, Timing Analyzer uses Synopsys Design Constraints, or SDC, a standard method for constraining timing in the ASIC world used by Synopsys Primetime Timing Analysis tool. Intel has adopted the SDC standard for use with PLD designs. While Tickle and SDC are command line and text based methods of interacting with Timing Analyzer, this training will focus on the Timing Analyzer GUI and show the equivalent Tickle or SDC commands. Timing Analyzer is part of the Intel Cordis Prime software but can be run independently. There are several different methods to open the Timing Analyzer. You can click the Timing Analyzer toolbar button, double click in the task window, or select Timing Analyzer from the Tools menu of the Intel Cordis Prime software. You can run the Timing Analyzer GUI in standalone mode by typing Cordis underscore STAW from the command line. You can also run the Timing Analyzer without the GUI from the command line. Here is the Timing Analyzer GUI. It is organized similarly to the Intel Cordis Prime software with a viewing pane for viewing timing reports, a task pane for executing commonly performed tasks, and a report pane for keeping track of generated timer reports. There is also an operating conditions pane for choosing different timing models. We will go over each of these parts of the window in more detail and return to each of them throughout the training. The tasks pane provides quick access to the most commonly used timing analyzer operations such as setting up the timing netlist and generating commonly used reports. When you execute a task from the task pane, the task is performed with the task default settings. This is important to remember because there may be cases when you want to perform an action that does not use the defaults. When this happens, use the equivalent command from the menus at the top of the Timing Analyzer interface. The task pane operates in a similar manner to the task window in the main Intel Cores Prime interface. To execute a command and or create a report using the task pane, simply double click the item in the pane. Once a task is run, the task turns green 
and a green check mark is placed next to the task. Tasks can only be performed once on the current SDC timing netlist, so there is no need to run them again until a new netlist is created or the design is reset. You'll see how to do this later. The report pane displays a list of all reports that are currently available for viewing. The reports listed here may have been generated by tasks executed from the task pane or by using reporting commands directly in the console or in a script file. To view a report, simply select the report. Once a report is created, it is always available here until the timing netlist is reset. The view pane is the main report viewing area of the timing analyzer GUI. By default, newly generated reports appear in the view pane. There are a number of different types of reports you can create that will appear here. A timing summary table is the simplest and most common type of report. As mentioned, timing analyzer is path-based, meaning each and every path's timing is analyzed. Each row in a timing summary report provides basic information about either a single path in the design or about a clock domain. This information usually includes the source and destination ports or pins of the path, the launch and latch clock domains, and the calculated slack for the path. Rows in the report colored black have positive slack and are meeting timing. Rows in the report colored red have negative slack, indicating a timing failure. Other types of reports you might see are timing histograms, which indicate how many paths in the design have a certain amount of slack, and detailed path slack reports. This type of report is the most detailed type of report you can generate. It provides complete information about a single path in design and is extremely useful in debugging timing problems. The view pane allows you to view multiple reports at once to make it easy to compare results. It includes a couple of special controls for this purpose. To view multiple reports at once, click on the plus sign in the upper right corner of the view pane and drag it to divide the view pane into multiple windows. Here's an example of the view pane split into four windows. To display a new report in one of the windows, simply highlight a window and select a report from the report pane you would like to appear in that window. You can also force a report into a particular window using the red target button found in the upper right corner of a window. With a viewing pane targeted, any report selected in the report pane will be placed in the targeted window. To remove windows from the view pane, drag the bars between the windows to the edge. This removes the split. The console pane, found at the bottom of the timing analyzer window, allows you to directly enter and execute SDC or tickle commands. Note that SDC constraints entered here do not automatically get stored in a .sdc file and will be lost if you quit the timing analyzer without saving. If you use the Timing Analyzer GUI to enter commands, the console pane will display the equivalent command or constraint. The Timing Analyzer console pane also displays output messages from the Timing Analyzer. With the History tab, you can see a record of all executed SDC and tickle commands. Just copy and paste from the History tab to easily create tickle scripts or .sdc files. To easily create and store SDC constraints, the Timing Analyzer features an SDC file editor. The SDC file editor acts as through the Timing Analyzer interface by selecting a new SDC file from the Timing Analyzer file menu is identical to the Intel Cores Prime text editor. If you create a file using the Intel Cores Prime text editor and give it the .sdc file extension, you'll have the same features available as if you created the file from within the Timing Analyzer tool. The editor includes a number of features to help you create timing constraints. If you are unfamiliar with SDC syntax, you can use the Insert Constraint submenu found in the Text Editor's Edit menu to access graphical dialog boxes that will help you build valid SDC constraints. We'll see how this works next. If you are familiar with SDC and want to code your files manually, syntax coloring of commands and optional arguments, detailed tooltips, 
and highlighted delimiter matching make it easy to ensure correct constraint syntax and match parentheses and square brackets. The tool also includes built-in templates for quickly creating entire SDC files for common designs. We'll look at these templates in a moment. As mentioned, you can use the Timing Analyzer graphical constraint creation tools to easily create SDC constraints. When you select a type of constraint to create from the Insert Constraint submenu from the SDC File Editor's Edit menu as shown here, you are presented with a dialog box that includes text fields and options for creating the constraint. As you set or change constraint options, the SDC command field updates on the fly to display what the final constraint will look like. When you click the Insert button, the constraint is entered into the .sdc file at the cursor location. Since the constraint is entered exactly at the cursor location, remember to place your cursor directly before accessing one of the dialog boxes for the constraint entry. The GUI does not add carriage returns at the end of newly created constraints, so you need to add these and place a cursor correctly to avoid syntax errors. Instead of manually creating SDC constraints one by one from scratch, you can use SDC templates to quickly create a complete .sdc file for your design. Clicking the Insert Template Toolbar button or selecting the command from the Edit menu opens the dialog box shown here. On the left are a number of categories of templates. Since the text editor is used to create other types of files besides SDC, you'll see categories for a number of different template types. Expanding the Time Quest category displays the template shown here. Templates are available for creating everything from individual constraints to complete .sdc files for many typical designs. To use a template, select it from the list on the left. The template appears in the preview window on the right. The template can be edited and customized here. When ready, click Insert to insert the template into your .sdc file at the cursor location, or click Save to save the customized template as a saved user template. Saved user templates can be accessed for use with the other designs from the user category of the TimeQuest templates. Complete design templates are listed in the SDC Cookbook subcategory. The SDC Cookbook is an online PDF document that provides examples of SDC files for completely constraining a number of typical designs. To learn more about the SDC Cookbook, click the link for it here or visit the Timing Analyzer Online Resource Center. Now that you're familiar with the Timing Analyzer interface, let's look at the steps involved in actually using the tool. Every time you use Timing Analyzer, you'll follow the steps listed here. First, you'll generate an SDC timing netlist. Constraints cannot be read in or created without it. Next, you'll either read in or edit an existing .sdc file or constrain the design directly in the console. You'll then update the timing netlist based on the entered constraints and generate timing reports to verify whether your design will meet your timing requirements. Finally, you'll have the option to write out your constraints into a separate .sdc file. To start, you'll generate a timing netlist based on your design's compilation results. The options available are slightly different depending on whether you are using the Lite, Standard, or Pro Edition of the Intel Cordis Prime software. We'll look at the Pro Edition options in a moment, but for the Lite and Standard Editions, the netlist you create can be based on a full placement and routing of your design called a post-fit netlist, or from just a synthesis called a post-map netlist. Use the post map netlist option to create an early timing netlist for initially creating your timing constraints without having to route the design. Use the post fit netlist to verify whether the fitter was able to place and route your design in a way that satisfies all timer requirements. There are three ways to execute this command. The create underscore timing underscore netlist tickle command entered in the console, console selecting Create Timing Netlist for the Timing Analyzer Netlist menu, or by double-clicking, 
create timing netlist in the task pane. Executing this command through the task pane uses the default options of a post-fit netlist and a slow corner delay model. We'll look at delay models next and examine the other available netlist options in more detail later, but if there is no post-fit netlist because the design has not yet been fully compiled, executing the command in this way will fail. If this happens, just use the command from the netlist menu to select the post map option. Timing Analyzer checks timing in at least two process corners by default. A slow corner, defined by the device's highest operating temperature and lowest operating voltage, and a fast corner, defined by the device's lowest operating temperature and highest operating voltage. When you create the timing netlist, you select the slow corner, the fast corner, or a custom operating condition corner that may be available depending on your target device. You may have heard of four-corner testing for other types of analysis, so why do we need to test in only two process corners? If the tool can ensure that we meet setup timing in the slow corner, meaning even the slowest signals arrive at their destinations early enough to meet setup timing requirements, and meet hold timing in the fast corner, meaning that even very fast signals remain stable long enough to meet hold timing requirements, we can guarantee timing across all supported device processes, voltages, and temperature ranges, often referred to as the PVT of the device. A timing netlist in the timing analyzer can only analyze one delay model at a time, but you can easily switch between all timing models available for your targeted device. When compiling your project, Note that the Intel Cores Prime compiler will place and route the design to meet timing in all timing models seamlessly. Timing Analyzer supports additional timing models for the 65 nanometer and smaller technology devices. These smaller technology devices exhibit a temperature inversion phenomenon where they can actually perform slower at lower temperatures and faster at higher temperatures. See the white paper linked here for more details on these additional timing models. To access any available additional timing models for your targeted device, use the Set Operating Conditions option from the Netlist menu or the Set Operating Conditions window. Besides the ability to select the standard fast and slow delay models, you can select the special slow, low temperature and fast, high temperature models as well as any other available models depending on your selected targeted device. Military and industrial rated devices have other available operating conditions that should be analyzed to ensure these devices will meet timing in these extreme conditions. This operating condition setting has precedence over the base model selected when creating the timing netlist. To check the available models and operating conditions for your target device, enter the get underscore available underscore operating underscore conditions command in the timing analyzer console or include it in your tickle scripts. After creating the timing netlist, you'll create or read in a .stc file. You can use the SDC file editor to create a new file or edit an existing one. You may have noticed that the constraints menu, shown here, has the same constraint creation option shown earlier when using the edit menu in the SDC file editor. It is possible to use this constraints menu to create constraints, but constraints created from here get written to the console not into a .scc file. We'll look at using the constraints menu on the next slide. For now, if you are using the SDC file editor to create a .scc file, do not use the constraints menu. When you're done creating or editing the .scc file, use the read SDC file command found in the task pane, the constraints menu, or enter read underscore stc in the console pane to read the .stc file into the timing analyzer. Executing the read stc com command from the task pane does not give you the option of specifying the stc file name. If you don't specify an stc file name, the timing analyzer will first read in .stc files that have specifically been added to your Intel Core's Prime project. If no files have been added, the tool will look for a .stc file that shares the same name as the current revision of the project. 
A typical design may use multiple .sdc files to constrain timing, especially in a team-based environment where different team members work on different parts of the design. If you have multiple .sdc files, simply read each one in using the options mentioned. Multiple files look like one long .sdc file to the tool. If you don't have a .sdc file and don't want to create one yet, you can enter timing constraints directly in the Timing Analyzer console. You can use the GUI commands found in the Constraints menu or type the commands into the console. You may also want to enter constraints in the console if you want to test out new constraints without yet adding them to your .sdc file. An advantage to doing this is that entering commands directly in the console operates the Timing Analyzer in a more interactive fashion than using a .sdc file. Constraints are immediately applied to the timing netlist, and existing timer reports can be updated on the fly without having to create a new netlist and reload the .sdc file. However, if you do this, note that any constraints entered in the console are not automatically added to the .sdc file. You must do that through a manual copy and paste or by writing out a new file. If constraints are created directly in the console, there's no way to edit or delete them as you could by editing a .sdc file. To remove constraints that were applied through the console, add the remove underscore prefix before the name of the already applied constraint. This will remove the match constraint from the, from the netlist. As an example, remove underscore clock can be used to remove clock constraints. Note that the remove commands, other than the remove underscore clock, do not appear in the GUI, so they would need to be entered manually in the console. For general constraint management, it is recommended to simply always use a .sdc file and the file editor to create and edit constraints. That way, there's no chance of losing constraints by accidentally quitting the program and all constraints are stored in one location. It has already been mentioned, but it is important to reiterate that you must enter timing constraints for all paths in order to have the timing analyzer fully analyze the design. The timing analyzer can only analyze a design based on constraints that are entered by you as the designer. At the very minimum, constrain all your clocks and all of your I.O. paths. With this, the fitter has enough information to place and route the design to meet all internal and external timing requirements. As you'll see, Constraining all clocks and I.O. is not as difficult a task as it may sound. The SDC specification contains extensive support for wildcards, making it possible for a single constraint to cover many paths, or even all the paths within an entire clock domain. Later, we'll take a closer look at some of the constraints you'll need to fully constrain your designs. Next, you'll update the timing netlist. This tells the timing analyzer to take the constraints you've entered and apply them to the current timing netlist. While updating the timing netlist, the tool may generate warnings for your design. For example, if you have clocks or I.O. that have not been completely constrained, or if the design contains combinatorial feedback loops. You can perform this step in the console pane, the task pane, or select the command from the netlist menu. The three steps presented so far, creating the netlist, reading in SDC constraints, either from a file or the console, and updating the netlist, are required every time the timing analyzer is started and any time a constraint is added or changed. The steps are listed right at the top of the task pane to make it easy to perform them. Note that if you didn't need to specify a different .sdc file in step 2, because the SDC file name matches the project name, you can skip step two and immediately update the netlist. The tool will automatically read in the correct .sdc file and update the netlist with that file's constraints. Once the netlist is updated with your timing constraints, you'll finally be able to generate timer reports. Timer reports help you verify your timing requirements and locate violations. Use diagnostic reports to check your design to make sure it is fully constrained or get a report of what SDC constraints and exceptions have been applied to the timing netlist. 
You can generate many different types of detailed reports by using the Report Timing command or by choosing a report from the Reports menu or the Reports section of the task pane. As a shortcut, if you've previously created a timing netlist and selected the .sdc file to read in and back in Step 2, you can skip Steps 1 through 3 and immediately start generating timing reports. Just double click the report you want to create in the task pane and the netlist will get created, the .sdc file will be read in, and the netlist will get updated with the constraints from that file before immediately creating the selected report. In the process of generating timer reports, you may notice reports listed in the report pane colored yellow with a question mark indicator. Reports displayed like this are considered to be out of date. A report is out of date if the current timing netlist is altered in some way after the report has been generated, causing the data in the report to no longer match the current state of the timing netlist. This occurs if SDC constraints are entered via the console. Reports are also considered out of date if they have not yet been generated for a particular timing model. To fix this issue, update the timing netlist if necessary and choose either the Regenerate or Regenerate All Out of Date command from the right click menu of an out of date report. Note that if a constraint is added or changed in a .sdc file, the tool does not automatically add the out of date warning to existing reports. You must recreate the timing netlist and read in the .sdc file again. You can do this easily with the Reset Design command. If at any point you want to quickly erase all of your constraints from the tool's memory and start over, you can use the Reset Design command. This command tells the timing analyzer to delete the current netlist and create a new one. This is equivalent to running the Delete Timing Netlist command from the Netlist menu followed by the Create Timing Netlist command. This command can be executed from the Task Pane, the Constraints menu, or by using the Reset Design command in the console. If you've been entering constraints directly in the console, you'll need to save your timing constraints into a .sdc file for use by the Cordis Prime fitter. To do this, use the Write SDC File command in the console, the Constraints menu, or the Task Pane. The Write SDC command tells the tool to take all of the constraints and exceptions currently applied to the netlist and write them out to a .sdc file. Any wildcards used in any constraints are automatically expanded. For example, if a constraint in your file references a bus such as Q bracket star, the written out file duplicates the constraint for each bit of the Q bus. So, a single constraint for Q bracket star becomes multiple constraints for Q bracket 0, Q brackets 1, and so on. If you already have a .sdc file, and you have not applied any new or additional constraints to the design during analysis, then this step can be skipped. This step is only needed if you have added new constraints outside of your input.sdc file. There are a few things to note about writing out a .sdc file. Remember that .sdc files are only generated if requested. If you close the Timing Analyzer tool without storing your constraints either by manually adding them to a .sdc file or automatically with the write sdc command, those constraints are lost. Also, when you use the write sdc command, what you will see in your file are the commands as interpreted by the tool, not the exact commands that you entered. Run the report sdc command to see the exact constraints currently applied to the netlist and exactly what will get written out to your .sdc file. Later, We'll discuss special Intel-specific constraints that are not part of the standard SDC, but provide some useful shortcuts for constraining a design. These SDC extension commands will not be understood by other tools that use SDC, such as PrimeTime. To translate these special constraints into standard SDC, use the dash expand option in the console or enable the expand option in the write SDC file dialog box. This is useful even if all your constraints are contained in an existing .sdc file. So those are the basic steps to using the Timing Analyzer tool. Generate your timing netlist, enter constraints, 
then update the timing atlas to apply them. Generate timing reports to verify results, and then save any new constraints you may have entered. This concludes part two of the training. If you missed part one, or you'd like to continue on to parts three or four, you can register for free at the link shown here. To learn about additional resources available to help you with Timing Analyzer, continue on to the next slide. For more information about Timing Analysis and the Timing Analyzer, be sure to read the Timing Analysis Overview and Timing Analyzer chapters in Volume 3 of the Intel Cordis Prime Handbook linked here. To learn techniques for closing timing in a design using SDC constraints and Timing Analyzer, see the Timing Closure and Optimization chapter in Volume 2. If you'd like hands-on experience with Timing Analyzer, or you want to learn advanced techniques for closing timing in a design, enroll in any of the Timing Analyzer related instructor-led courses listed here. There are many free online training courses, just like this one, that can help you learn more about timing analysis and timing closure. Use the links here to register for a course or to find more training at the Intel Training website. One last thing, when you registered for this training, a link was sent to you in your confirmation email that links to a short online survey. Please complete the survey to let us know what you think of this training and if you could think of ways it can be improved.